In this video, we're going to compare how the SV Boney 905C color camera and the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro color camera compare in planetary astrophotography. We'll look at some images of Saturn and Jupiter captured through a Celestron Nexstar 6SE, and we'll walk through animating pictures of Jupiter from this to this. My name is Chris, and welcome to my channel. The core of the Milky Way is receding in the west, but Jupiter and Saturn have risen to a good viewing position, which is perfect because I have yet to try my ASI 294 MC Pro for planetary imaging. I took my first videos of Jupiter and Saturn through my telescope two years ago using the video record function on my Nikon D5200 camera. Last year I tried again, this time capturing the gas giants with backyard Nikon which uses a camera's live view to record planetary videos. I have to confess that I've been disappointed with the resulting images, which has kept me away from planetary imaging for a long time. This year, I'm going to use SharpCap. I'm going to create SIR files directly from my ASI 294 MC Pro and hope for the best. Now, it occurs to me that my guide camera, the SV Boney 905C, is also marketed as a planetary camera. So I'm also going to use it to capture Jupiter and Saturn. The ASI camera has a better sensor. It's cooled and it costs way more than the SV Boney camera, but it's also not primarily a planetary camera. So I'm quite curious about how the images will compare. Now in order to image the planets, I'm gonna to have to switch over my imaging train. My current setup of focal reducer, T adapter, spacers, filter drawer, and camera are set up for nebula imaging. But for planetary, I'm going to have to take out all of those components and substitute those for the regular visual back, a Barlow lens, in my case a uh, 2x Barlow. This is the Celestron Omni 2x Barlow lens, and the uh, one and a quarter inch nosing for the ASI camera. So uh, let's just do this quickly. I uh, will take these all off together. Last extension always gets stuck. Oh, come on. It's pretty snugly. Having switched over my setup to planetary mode, I found Saturn and took several two-minute SIR videos in SharpCap. I used a frame rate of 1 30th of a second, and I set my gain to auto. I also set the capture area to be 1024 by 768. I then did the same for Jupiter. I used a 1 30th of a second frame rate, and again the gain set to auto, with the same capture area of 1024 by 768. At this point, I was feeling lucky. So I pointed my telescope at Uranus as well. My ASI camera produces a green tinge because it senses two green pixels for every red and blue. So I stacked the image in auto stackered, used Cyril to remove the green noise, and sharpened and processed the image here. One of the things I love about having a guide camera is that I can turn on guiding while capturing planets, keeping them in the center of my field of view. However, at this point, I wanted to try capturing planets with my guide camera, which is also a planetary camera. I have used my ASI camera for guiding in the past, but I didn't want to go through the hassle of recalibrating my guiding software, so I was going to have to rely on how well I had performed my polar alignment. I'm going to be swapping this little camera for this big camera. Let's... Uh do that quickly while we still have Saturn up in the sky. I 
I pointed my scope at Saturn, which was much harder to find, since I couldn't use the wide field of view of my guide scope to spot it, and because the sensor on the planetary camera is much smaller than the ASI, making the field of view that much smaller. I captured two minutes of Saturn. Next I found Jupiter, which was much easier. Because it was so bright, I could see the glow from Jupiter in my field of view before I saw the planet, making it easier to track down. I captured two minutes of Jupiter as well. The great red spot on Jupiter comes into view every 9 hours and 56 minutes or so, and the next transit wasn't going to be until 4 a.m., and I wasn't about to wait that long. But I did get started on image processing. I ran each SIR file through PIP in order to generate an AVI, without any optimization, keeping the frames in the same order in order to produce a video. And here's what I found. The image on the left is from the SV Boney SV905C camera. The image on the right is from the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. The image from the ASI has a slight greenish tinge, while the SV905C seems to have less color depth. Now this is similar to what I saw when I captured the Andromeda Galaxy with both cameras. There seemed to be less resolution with the 905C than there was with the 294MC Pro. Now I chalked that up initially to how much detail the sensor could capture, which is, I think is still the case. Uh, but I also think that color depth plays a part. Now, color depth was less of an issue when capturing Jupiter. Now here again we have the image on the left taken with the SP Boney camera and the image on the right with the ZWO. And here are both images stacked and auto stackered and processed in Cyril and GIMP. I sometimes use Registax to process planets, but since I'm fairly new to planetary imaging, I'm just more comfortable with Cyril and GIMP. Now the resulting images of Jupiter are actually pretty close. Given the price difference between both cameras, I was actually quite surprised by how well the SV Boney camera did compared to the ASI. I think it's a pretty good little camera. Now I wasn't going to stay up until 4 a.m. waiting for the red spot to transit Jupiter, but the image processing took long enough that I did. And I had enough time to switch my imaging camera back to the ASI 294MC Pro, reconnecting my 905C for guiding. Being new to planetary photography, and to sharp cap, I noticed there was a setting for performing a sequence of captures. So I set sharp cap to capture 15 sets of two minute SIR files at five minute intervals. I placed each of the Jupiter SIR files into its own folder and used PIP to once again generate AVI files. I ran the SIR files through Auto Stackert at 25%, and I processed each of them using the same parameters and sequence of steps in Cyril and GIMP. In Cyril, I removed the background and adjusted the saturation, and in GIMP, I adjusted the sharpness and curves. I saved each resulting processed file. Next, I took all of the processed images and put them into a folder, and I renamed them, numbering them sequentially. This is where I realized I had made a mistake. By having set the game to automatic and sharp cap, each resulting image had a different brightness. I was able to calibrate out some of that difference in GIMP, but not all of it. It was too late to capture more images, so this is something I'll have to remember for next time. I then imported the first file into Shotcut, and I set the parameter for image sequence, telling Shotcut that this was a sequence of image files which could be put together into a movie. I added the image to a video track and used it to generate a video which I exported at 85% quality. And that's how I got to this. For next time, I will definitely set my gain manually. I will also time my imaging to capture the red spot from the time it appears to the time it disappears, and not just from the transit time, which actually marks when the red spot is in the center of Jupiter. I'd also like to try timing things for when one of Jupiter's moons crosses at the same time as the red spot. I think that would make for a pretty cool animation. 
One thing's for sure, these images turned out a lot better than last year's, and I'm actually pretty excited about my next planetary imaging session. Thanks for watching, and clear skies.